Welcome to Quant Concepts. This is a short demonstration clip on how to correctly set up your null and alternate hypotheses in statistics. Now, recall from the 10 minute YouTube clip that your friend Sam claimed that his bowling average is 150 or higher. You decide to play three games with him, and his average for those three games is a dismal 40. Now, Sam's claim of having an average of 150 or higher is sounding shady. Also, recall that your cutoff score for determining whether Sam's claim is a lie or not is 120. That is, if his average score when bowling with you is above 120, you'll believe his claim. If it is below 120, you'll conclude he is a liar. Now, probably the most important step in hypothesis testing is correctly setting up your hypotheses. This is one of the most common mistakes I see when grading exam papers, and if you get this step wrong, all your subsequent calculations and the conclusion of your test will likely be incorrect, so please pay attention. Okay, there are two possible scenarios here. Sam is either lying or he's telling the truth. So we're essentially testing two claims. One, Sam's lying and his bowling average is below 150. Or two, Sam is telling the truth and his bowling average is equal or above 150. Now, let's write down these claims formally. The first one is that Sam's true bowling average is below 150. The second claim is that Sam's true bowling average is 150 or above. Mu, which looks like a U, represents the population mean or population average. This is the true average that we cannot observe. That is, we will never really know Sam's true bowling average because we haven't seen every single game of bowling he's played in his entire life. So we have our two claims. Now, the claim with the equal sign will be called the null hypothesis. The other claim without the equal sign is called the alternate hypothesis. Pretty easy so far, yeah? The convention in statistics is to set up the two hypotheses as follows. First, we write down H0. This is a symbol for the null hypothesis. Now, below that, we write down H1. This is the alternate hypothesis. Make sure you write down the null and alternate hypotheses in this order. The null first and the alternate below it. Now, simply insert the null hypothesis, the claim with the equal sign next to H0. And the alternate hypothesis, the one without the equal sign next to H1. And that's all there is to correctly setting up the hypotheses. It's always this easy, as long as you follow these simple rules. Always write H0 and H1, and make sure H0 is on top of H1. H0 is a claim with the equal sign, that is, the null hypothesis. H1 is the other claim, that is, the claim without the equal sign, otherwise known as the alternate hypothesis. Surprisingly straightforward, huh? Okay, let's go through some examples for practice. Suppose Mike claims that the average price for houses in Castle Hill is more than $500,000. Write down the null and alternate hypotheses. Now, let's write down the claims. Mike states that the average house price, mu, is more than $500,000. Note that his claim is that it's more than, not more than or equal to. The counterclaim, that is the complete opposite of this, is that mu is less than or equal to $500,000. Now, here is the equal sign, so this claim must be the null hypothesis. Remember, the null hypothesis is a claim with the equal sign. The first claim has no equal sign, so this must be the alternate hypothesis. Now, let's set this up properly. We write down H0 and H1, and the null and alternate hypotheses in that order. Okay, let's look at another example. Someone claims that the average age of YouTube users is 25. Write down the null and alternate hypotheses needed to test this claim. Well, first, we write down the claim that is being made. The average age of YouTube users is equal to 25. Now, we write down the counterclaim, or the opposite of that. The average age is not equal to 25. We can see the equal sign is in the first statement, so this must be the null hypothesis. The second statement has the unequal sign, so this must be the alternate hypothesis. Now that we've figured out what's what, we simply have to write these down in the proper format. H0 for the null hypothesis, 
and H1 for the alternate hypothesis. The hypotheses we've just set out may look slightly different from the ones in your course or textbook. This is because it is common in statistics to replace the less than or equal to and the more than or equal to signs with an equal sign. For example, suppose your hypotheses look like this. The null hypothesis is that the population average is larger than or equal to 150, and the alternate hypothesis is that the average is less than 150. We can replace the larger than or equal to sign in the null hypothesis with an equal sign. Both null hypotheses are correct. Suppose you have another set of hypotheses. Again, we can replace the less than or equal to in the null hypothesis with an equal sign. It's best to use a convention that your teacher or textbook prefers, though technically both methods are correct. In summary, you simply have to follow these steps. 1. Write down the claim being tested. This will usually be quite obvious in the question. 2. Write down the counterclaim. This is a complete opposite claim. What must be true if the claim in step 1 is false? 3. The claim with the equal sign is a null hypothesis. This is always the case. 4. The claim without the equal sign is the alternate hypothesis. 5. Set out the hypotheses properly so it looks like this. Thank you for watching Quant Concepts Education. Please check out our other videos on YouTube.